Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She scoured the pots, scraped the pans, candied the yams and spiced the hams, and though her dad would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceiling, coffee grounds and potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the cans, it covered the floors, it cracked the windows and blocked the doors with bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones. Prune pits, peach pits, orange peels, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal. Pizza crust and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crust of blackburn butter toast, grizzly bits of beefy roast. The garbage rolled on down the hall, it raised the roof, it broke the wall, greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, clops of goopy bubble gum, cellophane from green bologna, rubbery blubbery macaroni, peanut butter caked and dry, curled milk crusted pie, moldy melons dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold french fried rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. At last the garbage reached so high that it finally touched the sky, and all the neighbors moved away, and none of her friends would come to play. And finally Sarah Cynthia Stout said, Okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state, from New York to the Golden Gate, and there the garbage she did hate. Poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot now relate, because the hour is much too late. But children remember Sarah Stout, and always take the garbage out.